Hi guys, I'm Jules and I'm back with another list. Today we're going to go over men's playbook of insults, salts, salts, salts. Let's dive in. Number one, they will tell you to get a cat, dog, or some type of pet. They actually have gotten creative and they tell you to get something other than a cat nowadays, but it's usually a cat some kind of pet that is not an insult fellas you are actually roasting yourself by highlighting the fact that we would rather get any other living being other than you to be in our lives also as a woman i don't have to take care of shit it is not my job to take care of you a pet cat dog or a plant if i don't want to it's also an insult that i would rather be alone than to ever be in your presence so whatever number two you talk about how we're ran through you talk about our body counts now i don't mean to be a blanche Devereaux. well yes i do i'm just gonna put all my business out there in my personal experience, any man that talks about you being ran through or talks about body count is either really tiny or not skilled at all when it comes to being physically intimate and they are intimidated and threatened at the fact that you might know what you're doing and you might have had better than them and with these types of men, you have. Number three, saying you're too old, you've hit a wall. This is why we prefer younger women. This is another reason why I'm so passionate about my content reaching younger women because they seek them out so they can take advantage of them. They know that we're experienced. They know that we have been through it and we have heard the BS that they put us through. So they target younger women who might not be as experienced or as educated in the area of these idiot men and they seek to take advantage of them. It is not a flex that you cannot maintain a healthy relationship with someone within a healthy age range. It also shows that you are mentally and emotionally immature. That's not a flex that you prefer younger women. You're a predator! Number four, calling us bitter, angry, and aggressive. It's like the big gaslight. Anything that they don't agree with, any boundaries, anything exposing them for who they are is bitter, angry, and aggressive. No, it's truth. It's harsh truth that you are not mature enough to open your mind to so that you can make positive changes. Bitter, angry, and aggressive is just code for you're not submissive and you're not doing what I tell you to do. Number five, they call us masculine. They tend to do this a lot to black women. And I saw this on uh, someone's TikTok today. It's so funny. Our masculine ancestors led us to freedom, caused us to be able to sit anywhere we want to sit on a bus. These masculine women have done so much to move us forward in society, things that they benefit from to this day. Them calling us masculine is just code for, I don't like a woman being in power. I want to be in charge. I think I should do everything, daddy, even though I'm not qualified. Good men know their strengths and weaknesses, and they work with women in order to get the mission, whatever that may be, accomplished. They don't try to reign over them or put them down when they're actually doing a good job. Number six, they tell us to die alone. Funny thing is, statistically, in most heterosexual relationships, men usually die first because they don't take care of themselves and they expect the woman to do anything. So we're actually going to die alone usually anyway. And also, from several women that I have talked to that have worked in nursing homes and in hospitals, it's usually the men who wind up lonely with no one visiting them or willing to take care of them. And there was even a mortician that I heard that she says they have picked up more men who died alone in skid mark draws eating a can of Vienna sausages because nobody cares about them. So that's just a big projection. They are afraid that that is their fate because statistically it is. And quite honestly, women usually have people willing to step up and take care of them because they have built actual friendships and they have taken care of family and friends and they will be taken care of one way or the other. Number seven, they call you fat. They call you ugly. Men that say this stuff, it's also a projection because when I get these comments on my pages, they usually don't have a profile picture or when I go to their page, they look like Elmer Fudd. They look like the Pillsbury Doughboy. They basically look like somebody who shouldn't be talking. They know that they are underqualified to be in your presence, so they have to try to bring you down a notch to make them feel better about themselves. Number eight, they'll comment something like, get your passports, fellas. The funny thing is, these women in these other countries, 
they don't take the they don't take a lot of the crap that a lot of American women take. Yes, there's misogyny and patriarchy everywhere. But a lot of these women require you to make a certain amount of money. They require you to take care of every financial need that they might have. They will not put up with your bullshit. And the funny thing is, a lot of these men can't even afford the passport and the round trip ticket to get to these places that they keep talking about. The women in these other countries don't want their asses either. And I'm sorry, it's not hurting my feelings. If you want to go somewhere else, please, by all means, don't let me burst your bubble. Please go. Number nine, they'll say that's why we prefer Hispanic, white, or foreign women better. The funny thing about this one is marriages between a black man and a white woman or some other race actually have a higher divorce rate. And I think it's because a lot of these men are just fetishizing them and they think that it's going to get them some kind of status. And then they get this wake up call when they turn around and this woman that they put on a pedestal is now running their life or leaving their ass. Nowhere to run to, baby. Nowhere to hide. Nobody wants you. Number 10, they put down single mothers. You know what? I don't want a man in my life who is too weak to step up to the plate and take real adult responsibility. And they fail to understand why we're single moms because a lot of you tend to leave and desert your families chasing these imaginary dreams and listening to your dumb friends telling you stuff and thinking that you found better. You didn't quite step up to the plate so we left your ass or you were abusive when we left you. You are intimidated by the fact that women can step up to the plate, do what needs to be done, get things taken care of, take care of their kids, and you're still living on a dirty air mattress with Walmart sheets that you haven't washed since you left high school. I've never met a quality man who is insulting women in any of these ways. I've never met a man doing anything with his life who is attractive, whatever attractive means to you, who is making any real moves in life, say any of this stuff. So when you say this stuff, you're telling on yourself and you're letting us know, okay, this is definitely somebody that I need to avoid. It doesn't look good for you. Anyway, tell me what you guys think of my list. Bye.